Hi, we're going to be talking about four triangle centers, starting with the triangles in, in center using GeoGebra. I'm using the online version. I went to the classic style and I chose the geometry mode or perspective. Um, I'm going to go up top and select polygon. Click three times. Um, try to make this a little bit odd, otter shaped. Now the in center is a is me is constructed from bisecting every angle of the triangle. GeoGebra just happens to have a tool that I chose there uh, to let you bisect angles. So I'm going to click one, click two, click three um, for one, two, three for two, and one, two, three. Um, we'll select the circle here. Imagine that you have a compass in your hand and you're placing the needle of the compass where these, where this little miracle happens uh, and these three lines meet. And you draw your circle out to one of the sides and it will touch all of the sides of the triangle at the same time. That's the end center. It inscribe it gives you the location of the center of a distinct and unique circle for that triangle okay sorry this in center is the center of the circle which uniquely and distinctly inscribes a triangle. So uh, this is exclusive stuff. Um, we'll go on to the next part. One of the problems is the end center is not that great to use with GeoGebra. Uh, I'm not going to explain why right now. But uh, it just happens to be a thing. And it's not uh, a problem with GeoGebra software or kind of the programmatic approach you have to have to get these things to work the way you want them to work. Uh, okay, there we go. We're going to select the polygon tool again. Make another random triangle. And... Let's talk about the circumcenter. This one's fun. We're going to cheat and quickly use the, uh, well, can't do that. Let's use the midpoint center tool first. We'll go around like that. That's the first step to cheat. Um, and then we want to draw perpendicular lines. Now why is this? Because the circum center is formed by taking the perpendicular bisectors of each side of the triangle. So we've already bisected the side and now we're going to make the lines perpendicular. I'm going to click twice on each one of these three fresh points. Um, you don't want to click too fast. Once we do that, oh, there's another miracle. Um, it's not the same kind. And once again, imagine you have a compass. You're placing the needle right here where uh, uh, the, how, how do you say, 
the singularity of the miracle happens, and then we come out to the vertice, and then it, uh, it happens upon the other three vertices at the same time. Isn't that something? Okay, but this one is GeoGebra friendly and begs to be explored. Uh, you make it like this, you get a straight line and uh, maybe some abstract art. Uh, let's move on to the next center. Uh, so, sorry. Go back. Um, this circle circumscribes the triangle. Again, this is an exclusive an occurrence uh, or pattern. Uh, I like to think of this stuff as being metaphysical uh, as definitively as you can get with it all. So this is a metaphysical, this truth is based in metaphysics and the, so the occurrence is not so much an occurrence. Uh, maybe it is a pattern. Uh, Sometimes these words get tainted whenever you take them up a dimension or so, uh, but it's um, uh, exclusive. That's the that's the word to stick with um, about these geometric parts. So. Every triangle has one of these. And it goes to prove uh, one of my favorite facts about a triangle that any three points alone by themselves, you can't separate a triangle from a circle at that point. Again, if you have them kind of forming a straight line, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's hard to tell where the circle, triangle, and all the other things are. Um, a little bit like dividing by zero, maybe. And, uh, you know, I, I find this thing very satisfying. Uh, so I recommend that other people play with it. You play with it especially. Um, spread the word. Uh, and just keep on messing with it till you understand the concepts. Maybe not so much why, but you... You're in... You want to be in a position for no surprises and it's not it's pretty easy um, so we'll move on to the next okay. uh, next we'll cover the centroid now this one is probably the most important We're going to select the polygon tool again, click four times, stopping where I started, and so the centroid was the point taken between, or sorry, we're going to cheat, we're going to use, sorry, we're going to use cheating tools. We could do this honorable way, but uh, it's already too much time spent uh, talking about important things. And so we draw these lines going through the vertice and the midpoint of um, each side of the triangle, sorry, whoop. more midpoints, like the cowbells, not really, we're only going three times, um, connect these opposite sided dots, here we have it, another miracle.
Um, so we're going to take our compass, spread. No, nope, not hitting the sides all at one time. Not hitting the vertices all at one time. So what's so special about this? Well, uh, we can't really do anything about our explanation or description when GeoGebra. But if you were to sit this triangle on a table, you couldn't necessarily pinpoint that that point on the triangle and you couldn't um, uh, hi. you couldn't necessarily you know triangles are triangles you just put it on the table you give it a whirl the triangle will spin about at midpoint and uh, it's be why would that be? It's because it's the center mass of the triangle. Um, and maybe your imaginations can start to go from there. Uh, I think a triangle is one of the most simplest objects. And there you have it. There's the center mass. I wonder what the center of the mass would be for other kind of shapes or something. Uh, hopefully this can kind of point the way in some thinking or... Um, some paradigm uh, that'll help any one of you but uh, that's what I like about this stuff uh, there's bound to be something useful here uh, on the bottom I like to say um, so on to the last triangle center for now there's an online encyclopedia of triangles. Uh, just Google, uh, use a search engine, bing it, uh, do whatever you want. Uh, look for um, Triangle Center Encyclopedia. Uh, there's a lot of triangle centers. Some of them may be more important than others. Uh, there's concepts in between or uh, interconnected between these uh, centers like the Euler line which uh, is something um, Douglas Hofstetter has a pretty interesting proof about uh, triangle you know comes around to the center of it and goes all over the place um, wouldn't expect anything less uh, and yeah so there's a lot of centers this is just a fourth one maybe somewhat common um uh, this one i'm the least impressed about but maybe i'm naive okay so taking the triangle uh, something like I made here, there's always going to be something of the longest side. Uh, and whenever you lay it down like this, uh, you take the longest side, you lay it down on this side, um, here, you'll end up with, let's say, one side A and one side B, and then uh, the longest side C, which is the hypotenuse, but this isn't necessarily a right triangle. Um, we take perpendicular line. Um, this is basically how you begin to use the uh, law of cosines to generally take the area of any triangle. Like if I move it like this, over here suddenly, that's not the, we need to flip it over on this other side. Okay. And I don't know what that line is doing right now. Uh, no, we don't want to do that. We want to do perpendicular line again. 
so it's a new triangle essentially and this is the longest side we're laying it down on the longest side and we're just gonna go straight oops uh, we're gonna grab the perpendicular line and we're gonna take it intersect with this vertice so this vertice is going straight down and making a perpendicular line with this uh, last line or with this uh, triangles line um, and that's the line we got uh, and I was saying that's how you generally take the area of a triangle is uh, you kind of imagine the triangle like this always longest side flat down A and B are on the other uh, parts and that's very that is the as far as I can figure that's uh, about the most sophisticated we're looking at the triangle setting it up for that law of cosines maybe uh, but really in actuality we just try to find there's a lot of shortcuts and we always just try to find the shortcut about things but uh, this as far as thinking goes you need to stick with the most general kind of way of things and uh, every triangle has a longest side it may not necessarily be a right triangle like I'm saying we always put it the longest side down and uh, think about taking a line straight down from each side um, like I'm saying that applies to any triangle like we can make another one uh, could be crazy and these lines are going bonkers on me uh, and uh, again we do a perpendicular line on this last part and we have it intersect the vertice um, and so we should have our other center somewhere around here ah okay well this is the ortho center again and it's taken with the it's taken by the intersection of the perpendicular line with from the uh, vertex inter intersecting with the vertice on the opposite side that event or that line can't always occur in terms of intersecting the um, vertex of the triangle and that's why these lines are kind of doing some funny junk right now um, is what it's trying to do every one of these lines is like we got our line over here okay And then we got this angle. Uh -oh. No, wait. Ah, that's not good. Boink. Okay. Uh, we're going to try to make our angle again. Lord help us. This is not working. I'm going to get this yet. Let me be very explicit. Come on, GeoGebra. Okay, there we have it. We got a right triangle right there. Okay, that's what's always going on if I'm gonna need to color code this one. And this, like I'm saying, this is my least favorite one. What is going on here? Mm. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, we got these green. The green lines are our lines pointing to the ortho center, which Euler. Um,
that's our ortho center. Make that point. Let me take this. The ultra clear. Uh, no, sorry. Boom. Okay, that's our ortho center. Can't really move around, fortunately. Um, I haven't quite got the ortho center um, pegged. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I didn't really take any good notes on it a long time ago, and uh, maybe there was something, some point I had to share about these. But uh, that's where it is, and it's. I guess I'm gonna have to carry this out for all the other stuff. Uh, whoop! Oh, no, let's not go that wild yet. Uh, okay. Nope. Uh, <laughs> this video is getting way too long. I am so sorry. Okay, uh, and we don't want to do the last one. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sometimes these things can be trickier than meets the eye. Got to do the point again. Uh, just so there's no errors. Angle. Uh, okay. And so here we have the ortho sensor. Uh, there's a lot of right angles going on with it. But uh, I'm going to get too caught up with uh, which ones to pay attention to. Uh, so, what's going on? Uh, so like I'm saying, we we were taking each line here, and we were going we we're going from the vertice. We we're taking the longest side, as we kept on rearranging our triangle here. We took the uh, point from the vertice, and we went straight down after placing the longest side kind of face down on the table, horizontally in this case. Um, and we went by, and we iterated that step on each three, uh, all three parts. So, uh, it's these 90 degree angles that they're making with the side of the triangle whenever that occurs, uh, that this center gets its name from. Um, Let's see. So what's going on whenever they're not quite doing that? If you can see or not see, I'm, I made these 90 degrees to, <laughs> I made these, where these 90 degrees are supposed to happen here, um, they're happening out here, and I want to explain that. Whoop. Exactly the opposite of what happened. Problem. Uh, uh oh. How am I going to arrange this? Oh, little things. I mean, kind of get them all. I mean, you can't get them all in, in there. Maybe, maybe not.
There we go. Okay. Don't you get away from me. Okay. Ignore those 270 glitches. Uh, just errors. Uh, it's kind of convenient, too. Let's move it to where we can't even see the ortho center. Okay, whenever these little spots outside the actual area of the triangle are happening, it's because we're taking one of these sides that's not the longest side, and we're placing it on our table, maybe propping up the other thing. It kind of, kind of just depends. Uh, you know, maybe this could still, maybe this isn't the longest side. It could still happen because. Um, yeah, but, well, hey, let's just make this one big old party, and hopefully I can finish this in less than four more minutes. Um, uh, we're going to take the midpoint at, of these things again, because we're going to make our central... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? No, no. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, midpoint. Got to go into safety mode and click each endpoint specifically. Normally, you can just click on the uh, vertex itself and draw the midpoint. I'm not sure if I can trust that right now. Um, so, there we go. Um, I'm going to draw these lines, here, here, okay, now we got our centroid again, so this would be right side up, basically, because we got this side, it's not the longest side, this side over here, up at top, is the longest side, um, this side over here is maybe the shortest side on the bottom. And um, this is the center mass of the triangle that we're laying on the table. Uh, so, you know, it's not going to tip over, is what I'm saying. That was a lot of effort to get to saying that, but this is how you combined all this thinking here with two of these centers. But this is just for the purposes of explanation. I'm sorry. This is the way math goes sometimes. Um, and so we're laying this triangle down on a side that's not its longest side. It's not falling over. And in order to establish this ortho center for any triangle, we got to go about this process of laying it down on on its side, on every side, no matter if it's the longest side of it or not. And then we just have our line from our vertices go straight down until it would hit the table perpendicularly. We keep in mind where that line is. And we just sequentially do this as we flip the triangle over every time on the table and if the vertice is not over if the vertice if the topmost vertice is not hanging over the triangle then it's going to fall down here where we have this 90 degrees and then it's going to be moving off into neverland infinity land somewhere not inside the triangle but we can see it here this big green spot and, uh, hmm. you know, there's probably something I didn't think of ahead of time where I could have just rotated this all real quickly. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's not really working. <laughs> Anyways. Every time we go to each side and we just go from the vertice straight down perpendicularly till we hit that table or 
that quote unquote table that is not mathematically speaking, it's just purely for conceptual sake. You hit the table or you hit the vertex. You can do that for each side, and then you get, uh, you know, one of these triangle centers, I think.